The last episode explored a bold idea, that early galaxies bright and abundant between redshifts of 8 and 12 might collectively generate much of the cosmic microwave background, a CMB not as a Big Bang relic, but as a signal shaped by the first galaxies. But those galaxies still formed 400 to 500 million years after the beginning. Now the JWST has found something even more disruptive, a luminous, chemically evolved galaxy just 280 million years after the Big Bang. Too early, too compact, too bright, and too much for our current models to explain. Let's dive in. In May 2025, a team working for the JWST released results from a program called Mirage or Miracle, a name that couldn't be more fitting. Their target, a faint speck of light in the cosmos field that completely vanished in every filter below 2 microns. That dropout pattern hinted at something extreme, and when they followed it up with Webb's spectrograph, they confirmed it. A galaxy, not just photometrically estimated, but spectroscopically verified, using both sharp Lyman break and multiple ultraviolet emission lines. Its redshift, 14.44, meaning the light we're seeing began its journey 280 million years after the Big Bang. This isn't a claim built on a single ambiguous signal. Five separate UV lines were detected, including nitrogen, carbon and helium features, giving the redshift a precision of 0.02. They named it MOMZ14, short for Mirage of Miracle Redshift 14. That makes it not only the most distant confirmed galaxy ever observed, but one of the most confidently identified high redshift sources to date. MOMZ14 isn't just far away, it's extreme in nearly every way we can measure. It has an absolute UV magnitude of minus 20.2, making it unusually bright for such an early epoch. Now, keep in mind, absolute magnitude isn't a raw measurement. It's calculated using the galaxy's redshift and an assumed expansion model. But even within the model, the galaxy appears unusually bright. If galaxies at a redshift of 14 are anything like those between 8 and 12, this one is pumping out far more light, suggesting an incredibly intense burst of star formation compressed into an incredibly small space. The web image shows that it has a half-light radius of just 74 parsecs, smaller than many globular clusters. Yet, it's clearly resolved, meaning it's not a point source like an AGN, but a real spatial extended galaxy. And it's not just sitting there passively, Spectral modelling shows it's undergoing a starburst, rapid spikes in star formation with a tenfold increase in activity over the past 5 million years. Its star formation rate over that period is estimated at around 13 solar masses per year, compressed into a volume smaller than most star forming regions in the Milky Way. Even more remarkable, its UV spectrum reveals chemical enrichment. Strong nitrogen and carbon lines suggest that massive stars have already lived and died, polluting the interstellar medium. The ratio of nitrogen to carbon is supersolar, a chemical signature commonly found in globular clusters, and some of the oldest stars in our galaxy. In short, MOMZ14 is not primitive, it's not diffuse, and it's not slowly assembling. It's a dense, active, chemically complex galaxy, just 280 million years after the Big Bang. In the standard Lambda CDM cosmology, galaxies don't just pop into existence fully formed. Structure is supposed to build gradually, through the hierarchical merging of smaller dark matter halos. Star formation is inefficient, constrained by cooling times, feedback and the slow accumulation of baryonic material. So what does the Lambda CDM predict for galaxies at redshift 14? Essentially nothing. At this time, just 280 million years after the Big Bang, the model says the universe should only be starting to assemble its first tiny galaxies, with luminosities far fainter than what the JWST just found. According to pre-Web census models, the chance of finding a galaxy like MOMZ14 this bright, this early, in the survey volume was effectively zero. But the Mirage or Miracle survey found one, which means Either this galaxy is an impossible fluke, or the models are missing something fundamental. In fact, just one detection in this survey implies that such galaxies are at least a hundred times more common than expected. 
And this isn't a statistical stretch. Cosmologists routinely use single object discoveries to infer lower bounds on number densities. And in this case, the gap between theory and observation is enormous. And it's not just MOMZ14. JWST has already uncovered a growing population of luminous, well-formed galaxies at redshifts of 10, 12, even 13. This isn't an outlier. It's the latest and deepest in a pattern. The deeper we look, the earlier the galaxies appear. And the earlier they appear, the less time we have for the physics of structure formation to do its job. There is another puzzle hiding in the light from MOMZ14. And it's not just what we see, but what we don't. At a redshift of 14.44, the universe should still be almost entirely neutral, filled with cold, unionized hydrogen that absorbs UV light. This is before reionization was supposed to be underway. In most models, the neutral fraction of hydrogen at this redshift is close to 100%. But MOMZ14 tells a different story. Its spectrum shows sharp Lyman alpha breaks, as expected, but crucially, there's no strong damping wing. The damping wing is what we'd expect from neutral hydrogen around the galaxy, a kind of soft, extended absorption curve on the blue side of the break. The fact that it's missing suggests something surprising. The region around MOMZ14 might already be partially ionized. In other words, the galaxy isn't forming in a dark neutral universe. It's forming in a bubble of ionized gas. And that raises more questions. How did the ionization happen so early? Were there other galaxies nearby pumping out radiation? Or is MOMZ14 itself already powerful enough to carve out its own ionized region? Either way, it points to a much more active and energetic early universe than the models anticipate. And if galaxies are already forming and altering their environments this dramatically at a redshift of 14.44, then reionization may have become far earlier than we thought. And we may need to completely rethink the timeline of how and when the universe became transparent. The surprises don't end with a galaxy's age, brightness or environment. They continue into its chemical fingerprint. The UV spectrum of MOMZ14 reveals strong emission lines from nitrogen and carbon, from these, the researchers calculated abundance ratios, and what they found is startling. The nitrogen to carbon ratio is supersolar, meaning there's more nitrogen relative to carbon than we see in our own sun. That's not what you'd expect in the early universe. Nitrogen is what we call a secondary element. It typically takes multiple generations of stars to build up. You need early stars to make carbon and oxygen, and then later stars, particularly intermediate mass ones, to convert some of that into nitrogen. So what does it mean to find this pattern just 280 million years after the Big Bang? It means stars have already come and gone. Vast, massive stars that exploded and seeded their surroundings. It means this galaxy has already had time for enrichment, for feedback, and possibly even for multiple stellar populations. And what's more, this exact abundance pattern is not unique. We've seen it before in some of the oldest stars in the Milky Way. In globular clusters, compact spherical star groups that orbit galaxies and are among the most ancient structures we know. They also show elevated nitrogen and sometimes very similar nitrogen to carbon ratios. And this raises an intriguing possibility. Are galaxies like MOMZ14 the birthplace of globular clusters? Are we seeing live formation of the kinds of structures that still survive today as fossil relics? Or could we be witnessing something even more exotic? The formation of supermassive stars whose violent life cycles enrich the environment with nitrogen in a matter of just a few million years. Whatever the mechanism, the message is clear. This galaxy is not chemically pristine. It carries the fingerprints of stellar evolution, already written in its light, just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. In our last episode, we explored a radical idea, that the cosmic microwave background, long thought to be the afterglow of the Big Bang, might actually be accumulated radiation from early galaxies. The logic was simple, but profound. If the JWST is seeing mature star-forming galaxies as early as redshifts between 8 and 12, then their combined energy output much of it absorbed and re-emitted by dust could, over time, redshift into the infrared and microwave bands and begin to resemble the smooth black body spectrum we call the CMB. 
That was already controversial, but Mom Z14 takes it further. This galaxy forms even earlier, and it's doing exactly what the reinterpretation model needs. Rapid star formation, high UV output, possible dust enrichment, and intense local radiation fields. Yes, its UV slope is blue, suggesting little dust along a line of sight, but that doesn't rule out dust elsewhere in the galaxy or in the surrounding intergalactic medium. In fact, the observed chemical enrichment all but guarantees that dust grains are present, and in such a compact, dense environment, even a modest amount of dust can absorb high-energy light and re-radiate it in the infrared. Now imagine thousands or millions of galaxies like this forming earlier than predicted, each releasing enormous amounts of energy into the surrounding medium. That radiation will be absorbed, re-emitted and redshifted over cosmic time, potentially giving rise to a smooth background signal. One that peaks in the microwave and one that resembles a black body, one that we, perhaps too quickly, interpreted as relic radiation. If galaxies like Mom Z14 are not rare but common, as the data increasingly suggests, then this isn't just an observational curiosity. It's a foundational problem, because the very signal we use to define the Big Bang itself might instead be the integrated light of early stars. Mom Z14 isn't just bright, it's compact, it's chemically rich, and it appears in a universe that's supposed to still be dark. That alone breaks multiple expectations in the Big Bang model, but it also exposes something deeper, a contradiction at the heart of how we measure and interpret the universe. In an expanding cosmos, galaxies at a redshift of 14 should appear larger, due to the way geometry behaves in curved space. They should also be dimmer, having had little time to form stars or enrich their surroundings. And the universe around them should still be cold, neutral and opaque, not ionised and glowing. But Mom Z14 is the opposite of all of that. It's smaller than expected, it's already producing radiation strong enough to carve out an ionisation bubble, and it's enriched with heavy elements, a sign that multiple generations of stars have already lived and died. So we have to ask, what if it's not just the galaxy that's in the wrong place? What if we are? What if redshift doesn't tell us distance the way we think it does? What if it doesn't measure expansion at all? Because if that's the case, if redshift has another cause entirely, then this galaxy might not be 280 million years after the Big Bang. It might not even be far away in any meaningful sense. It might be closer than we think, and it might be younger or older than our models allow. And it might not be a problem with early galaxy formation, but a problem with a framework that defines early in the first place. In a non-expanding universe, redshift becomes something else. A loss of energy, a shift in interaction, a trace of something real but misread. And without expansion, distance is no longer a marker of age. That changes everything. It means Mom Z14 might not be rewriting cosmic history. It might just be revealing that we never really understood it. What do you think? Is this the beginning of a shift in how we understand the universe? Or are we still missing something deeper? Let me know in the comments.